We will be providing tours after this media briefing of the new council member's office. It's actually quite something to see. So if we're ready, we'll uh, get the cameras rolling. Thank you all for being here today. Obviously, I haven't had much of an opportunity to do too many of these. I've been traveling more than I want to, but the vice mayor has handled them very well. And um, you all had probably seen we have been talking baseball lately. I, I guess there's a little bit of excitement in the community about baseball. I've um, been getting a lot of requests to do interviews talking about what is happening in Wichita, and so it's just really nice to see the momentum right now. We have a special guest. She stole the show the last time she was here, and uh, so it took me a while to invite her back, but I have the courage to bring her back again. She will steal the show again. With us today is Grishma Reddy. Grishma obviously was part of the Mayor's Youth Council in the past, and uh, we invited her to shadow me uh, about a year ago, maybe, and, and invited her to actually do the Mayor's briefing, and she will show me up again, but she is um, a Wichita Collegiate graduate, and she's been uh, going to school in New York City, and uh, we uh, certainly constantly hear from the community uh, employers and citizens about talent retention and some of the programs that we need to do. And so Grishma is going to talk about her program called Scholarship to Provide. What is her program called? Scholarship Selling to Success, which provides tools for students of all ages to make the most out of their education. Grishma, why don't you come out and uh, tell us more? Thank you, Mayor Longwell, for having me here again today. It's truly a pleasure to be back in Wichita and come back and speak to the community. So my platform, a little bit about it, I started it as a contestant for the Miss Kansas pageant, and it's called Scholarship Sailing to Su Success. So the S in the ship stands for service, the H serves, stands for home support, I for independence, and P for passion. So through my education, I found that with these four different tools, I've seen so much su success, whether it was in the classroom, whether it was in the mayor's youth council or even after school activities. So what I do now is go to schools around the city of Wichita and try to talk to kids no matter what age they are, starting from just kids in elementary school, going all the way up to seniors in high school, to try to tell them what to do in school, what tools to use, to bridge that gap between what resources kids are receiving in school. So I've noticed now going to school on the East Coast that kids over there in their high schools have been receiving a lot more press for college especially. So what I've been using, I partnered with a national website called Curiki. So Curiki functions similarly like Khan Academy, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. And Curiki provides different resources. It provides different AP classes. So these kids can take a full AP class for free on Curiki and then go take the test, which would help so much for college applications. So I promote websites like Curiki and other scholarship opportunities, like for example, the Miss Kansas pageant that I chose to compete in scholarships. And so when I was shadowing the mayor, I remember we went to a meeting and we met with the Automobile Association here in town. And I was ecstatic because I love cars, grew up wanting to be a race car driver. So I remember the one thing I took away from what we talked about this day was that they were looking for so many people in the Wichita area that they needed to go work for them. And they were willing to provide free training and a job just straight out of high school straight out of college or even in some cases for people that didn't have a high school degree. So what bothered me when I learned about this was there were so many kids that would say, I don't want to go to four-year high four-year college and have this traditional plan. And I saw here during this one lunch a simple solution to what they were asking and what these kids felt. 
you know, so many people in town are looking for people. They're trying to keep talent in Wichita. And I think what we really need is to show these kids and just put that step between what people are looking for and what kids need. And that's what I try to do in this community. I try to find those opportunities for kids and find mentors for kids that could then go on and help them find success in the community and not just in the community, but for themselves, making Wichita a better place. And by being on the Mayor's Youth Council, I've seen what an amazing city this is. And moving away from Wichita has honestly made me fall in love with it more. So coming back here, it's so exciting to see that the Mayor's Youth Council is still continuing to do so much to make the city a better place. So I want to thank Mayor Longwell for encouraging them. And even when I was a part of the Mayor's Youth Council, it's what really got me interested in going out into the community. And now I'm someone that wants to take all this education that I'm getting in New York back to Kansas to hopefully one day run for office right here in Wichita. So I want to thank Mayor Longwell once again for having me here today and for encouraging me to go so far with my platform in this city. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's awesome. That is awesome to have incredible young talent like Grishma and people that are enthused to make a difference. So thank you for being here again. We look forward to having you continue to return to Wichita as you uh, hopefully finish up your education at some point in time and come back and still call this home. So thank you for sharing, Grishma. We appreciate it. Century Two is having a birthday. Um, I'm sure you all are, are, are all excited about next Tuesday, January 29th. The community is invited to a public event to celebrate Century Two's birthday. This is a historic milestone for the building and the community. We want to honor it with food fun conversation about the future. The Century Two Citizens Committee will also share some of their preliminary findings with the community but want to emphasize there's been no recommendation. I was in Topeka this last couple of days and had someone come up to me as I was having lunch and said one of our state senators shared with them that uh, the plan was already underway to tear down Century 2. In fact, this state senator went as far to say that the plans were underway to tear down Century 2 and replace it with Dorothy's red slippers. So I'm not sure which mushroom patch this senator's been hanging out in, but I can tell you that we have no plans to tear down Century 2 at this point. And um, anything that says differently absolutely is false. And so I know that the committee's going to be sharing, again, some of their preliminary findings, but at this point in time, they do not have any recommendations specifically to the building or its future at this point. <clears throat> Excuse me, there's still some work to do. So we invite you all to come and help us fill out the birthday card. We know that there's still great things ahead for our city, but regardless of how you feel about the building, um, we all want the same thing, a vibrant space that best serves our performing arts needs in our community. And so come out and help us celebrate Century Two's birthday. And I know Mary Beth is here who heads up that Century Two committee. Did I miss anything from the committee? Okay. I want to recap some street news for you right quick. A quick recap on um, the street work and our dedicated public works team who's some of the works they've completed in 2018. Last year, we continue to emphasize street improvements based on citizen feedback. And so here today to tell you what we've accomplished, um, there's been a total of 39 street projects with a price tag of over $25 million of reconstruction that we've spent. You may have noticed some of the work's been taking place around town. I think I heard also uh, the baseball team received 2,500 name rec um, suggestions. One of them was Wichita orange cones. And you would see lots of mascots running around town. Um, so some of the work that's recently been completed, Douglas and Hydraulic, 1st Street from Santa Fe to Washington, 17th and Oliver, 
Tyler and 2nd Street, 143rd Street from Kellogg to Central. We also continued efforts to preserve and maintain the balance of our existing 5,000 lane miles of paved street network. Through our annual outsourced pavement preservation program, we uh, were able to fully complete major maintenance on more than 153 lane miles, more than 153 lane miles. An additional 268 lane miles stand ready for prompt completion this spring. Improvements included crack and seal, preservative seal, microsurfacing, and concrete repair. Again, the projects that have just been completed total more than $25 million in, uh, in price tag. A great example of the results of this effort are the nice rides you'll receive if you travel out west on 21st Street. That's a much improved uh, 21st Street from uh, basically the Sedgwick County Park all the way to Mays Road. Additionally, crews have passed more than 60,000 potholes, installed over 3 million linear feet of long line pavement markings, and replaced or repaired 9,000 traffic signs. Crews have also logged 18,000 miles of sweeping our streets, more than 136,000 miles of treating roads for snow and ice, in 2017, City Council dedicated an additional $10 million from the Hyatt proceeds to improve 207 lane miles of specifically neighborhood street repairs. In 2018, 57 lane miles were fully completed and the remaining 68 lane miles are prepared and ready for final surface treatment this spring. The city continues to increase funding for street improvements, nine and a half millions in our budget for pavement maintenance, uh, and that's an increase of about a million dollars. We plan to spend an estimated 15 million on street paving and residential developments, and another 16 million on local arterials in 2019. So just a, just a quick update on the investments that we're making in infrastructure. Did I tell you that Century 2 is not planned to be torn down yet? All right, I'll open it up for questions. So I'm assuming you got to see the plans for the new baseball stadium. We, what's your take on them? So uh, we've been working with the design team, a group of us have for um, over a month now. And the focus is on making sure that we meet, one, all of the guidelines that have been handed down by Major League Baseball, which includes getting rid of the artificial turf and going back to natural grass. And then um, many of the seating capacity guidelines are mandated by Major League Baseball as well. So when you see what the uh, capacity of the stadium is, that's not just a number that we've grabbed out of the air. Those are numbers that have been dictated by baseball. The stadium itself, I think, is going to be an incredible place um, for baseball to take place. It, as Lou Schweckheimer, who's been in the business, he's one of the owners, mentioned it may be one of the most iconic baseball stadiums that you'll see in the U.S. And he's been in baseball for 40 years. He might know what he's talking about. Um, but we want to make it uh, something that both fits into the Delano neighborhood and something that gives that really wow factor. And we think we can get there and we think we're really close. It's going to be a great place to hold e events. So a couple of highlights that I would hit that just separate it from what we've had there in the past. Um, Former stadium had about 10 points of concession where you could buy a hot dog or a drink or something. New stadium is going to have 60, 60, plus a sit down restaurant. It's going to have a museum for the first time. We've never had a museum. We've never had club seating that will hold nearly 400 people that will be in the same general area as the skybox seating. Skyboxes are going to be over the top nice compared to what you've seen in the past and innovative skyboxes that incorporate the outside more than they ever have in the past. 
some unique seating in the outfield that's never existed in Wichita. You'll be able to look right into the bullpens that will be sitting in the outfield. We'll have protected bullpens, not open bullpens that existed in the old stadium. The entire experience is just going to be so much more significant. You never have to leave this, the uh, area of play to go get a concession. You'll always be able to see it. The concessions are all on the field side of the play. Um, and just a very inviting space that uh, I think the community is going to fall in love with. And it's, um, some of it obviously doesn't have all of the um, the uh, ancillary stuff that's going to be built there because we're focusing on just the stadium, but the hotels, the entertainment, and all of that will make it even more of a wow factor when you see all of it come together. We had some concerns come into our newsroom about parking, and I know we talked at a briefing yesterday, uh, the vice mayor talked about parking not being a part of these concept drawings, but Will there be adequate parking there provided with the stadium as part of the stadium? So we will have uh, parking at the stadium primarily for um, um, those with handicap access that can make it convenient for them to get to the stadium. Certainly there's some parking, um, limited parking right at the front door of the stadium. Still working on some of the other parking that will in be incorporated into the overall uh, build out of the entertainment area, the, the, the river village, so to speak. And so we don't have all of the parking completed yet. We'll still be working through that. But we also will have a pedestrian bridge that will connect people to parking. And, and we know that there are, when you look at it in terms of um, a great example would be if you would go to a um, baseball game at Royal Stadium or a football game at Chief Stadium often many of the parking places that you see are further away than the parking that's available at Lawrence Dumont today. It just, there may be a river in your way that you may have to walk across a bridge or a pedestrian bridge, but the parking's actually closer than if you were to go to Arrowhead Stadium. Any other questions? All right. All right. Um, the delivery of the KC-46 tomorrow to McConnell. Maybe talk about kind of the excitement for it, especially because it was stalled before. So um, we are thrilled that, one, we're the very first community in the country to receive the new tankers. Um, we take a tremendous amount of pride in having McConnell Air Force Base in our community. Also love the fact that McConnell Air Force Base loves being in our community. As you all know, they have a slogan that says, here by chance, stay by choice. I will um, probably show my bias and tell you now one of the uh, names that I heard for the new baseball team is the Wichita Pegasus, the flying horse, which also happens to be the name for the new tankers, which I think would be pretty awesome to see Potentially. So, uh, Lou, if you're out there listening, no. Um, so we, we love it. It could be uh, incorporated into our community even a bigger fashion. I plan on being out there tomorrow looking forward to the arrival of the first tankers. And we take tremendous pride in the fact that um, Wichita, Kansas is here also to serve a greater purpose. Could you talk about maybe the impact that it's going to have in our community? So the impact goes all the way back to the significant remodeling that's been done out there in McConnell Air Force Base. And much of that was done by local contractors to the tune of over $200 million. So it provides direct jobs and construction jobs, but they also provide a, a boost to our local economy. You're talking about um, and I don't remember the full number out there, I'd have to check again. 3,000 people probably exist at McCall Air Force Base, but it, it's a big impact on our community. And, and certainly we appreciate them, not only their impact, but just the fact that we have people in our community that care more about the community than they do about themselves, which is exactly what Wichita's like to do. 
No other questions? Thank you all for being here.